Hi again, everyone. Chris Tisdale here again. Thanks for tuning in. In this presentation, I'm going to continue my live streams of mathematics videos. And I'm going to show you some examples involving infinite series and an application of a special test called the ratio test. I'm going to do a couple of examples and then I'll give you some idea of why the test actually works. So let me share my screen with you and we can get down to business. All right, here are a couple of infinite series. Now, these are just series of constants, but infinite series um, pop up all the time in applied mathematics, in physics, in engineering. And um, these kinds of series are just basic uh, forms of series. You may have heard of such famous series as Fourier series or Taylor series um, or geometric series. Now, these kinds of series, like I said, pop up all the time. So the kinds of problems that we're looking at are, are sort of very introductory, but they're important nonetheless. Okay, so we're asked to identify which of these two series converge and which diverge. Now, when we talk about convergence, we mean, okay, so let's say you sum up uh, these uh, terms to say capital N and then you take the limit as capital N goes to infinity is that does that limit exist or not if it exists then we say the series converges if the if it doesn't exist then we say the series diverges okay so let's work our way through this using this so-called ratio test all right so here the sum and is say a sub n in this case it's 2 to the n all over n factorial. Now, remember, n factorial, just for sort of a special case, the um, exclamation mark means factorial. So 3 factorial is just 3 times 2 times 1. Okay? So n factorial is sort of a generalization of that. Okay. What does this ratio test involve? Well, I'm glad you asked. It involves the ratio of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. And you take the limit as n, it goes, goes to infinity. Okay, so, so consider the following ratio. a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. Okay, so if this is a sub n, to get a sub n plus 1, I replace n everywhere with n plus 1, in brackets, say. Okay, and because this is like a, a, a fraction, if I divide one fraction by another fraction, I can just multiply by the reciprocal of this a sub n. So let's replace n with n plus 1, in brackets if we need to. So that's a sub n plus 1. And if, I'm, if I divide this by a sub n, what I can do is just multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, so now what I can do is simplify this and this and these factorials. Now remember, another thing with factorials is that, say, 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. That's 3 times 2 factorial. So 3 factorial is 3 times 2 factorial. Remember, 2 factorial is just 2 times 1. Okay? So we can apply that basic principle to this. n plus 1, all factorial, is n plus 1 times n factorial. So we can do that to actually simplify. Same up here. We can write 2 to the n plus 1 as 2 times 2 to the n. Now we can write n plus 1 times n factorial. And now you can see what's going to happen. We are going to get some nice cancellation going on. So this fact uh, uh, cancels with that. This cancels with that. And what am I left with? I'm left with 2 over n plus 1. 
Okay, so that part has just really involved some algebra and some simplification. Now what we want to do is take the limit of the ratio, a n plus 1 over a n, as n goes to infinity and see what happens, okay? All right, so we're left with this. Now as n gets large and positive, 2 over n plus 1 become very small, okay? And in fact, this will become, this will go to 0 as n approaches infinity. Now, 0 is a value that is less than 1, okay? That's important for the ratio test. The ratio test basically says that if the limit of this ratio is strictly less than 1, then the series converges, okay? All right. So let me just, uh, can I squeeze this in? Yep. There. All right, so the limit of this ratio is zero, which is less than one. And so the ratio test this series here converges. Okay, so let me just box that up. There's our conclusion. Now we've mentioned the test that, that we're using. Now, of course, the, the, a really good question here is, well, why does it have to be less than one for it to converge? And what happens, say, if it's greater than one? Well, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's get on to the second problem. Here we are given this infinite series. Does it converge or diverge? Okay, we're going to use the ratio test again. Now, a common theme with the ratio test, it, it uses exponents and factorials in the, in the, uh, in the problem. So whenever you see uh, exponents and factorials, the ratio test is a very good place to start. Okay, so let's look at two now. Take a new page. And let's follow the same kind of process as we did in part one. So here, what's the difference between the two? Well, instead of having a constant base here, I've got this n base. So how does that affect the uh, behavior of the series? All right. So let's look at the ratio of a sub n plus one all over a sub n. Okay. Now, again, I can um, replace n with n plus 1 in brackets, say, and then I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal because I'm dividing one um, fraction by another fraction. Okay. So what happens now? Well, it's just a matter of doing what we did before. Let's simplify our ratio as much as we can and, and then we'll take the limit and see what the limiting value is. Okay, so firstly, I can write this, the, this as the following. It's n plus 1 to the n, just by splitting up the power, times n plus 1. Now, down here, I can use the, the factorial property that I did in the first question. And I'll, over here, I've got this n factorial and n to the n. Okay, so let's look for cancellation now. So we're still doing a little bit of algebra. Let's um let's see what we can simplify. All right, so obviously that's going to cancel with that, similar to before. This will cancel with this, and I'm left with n plus 1 to the n over n to the n. I can put them under the 1 power, and I get the following. Okay, now you might think, well, what happens as n goes to infinity? How do I take my limit? Well, let's put the n into here and into here, and you'll see something really nice happens. Now, this, if you don't recognize it, this is a very special form. When we take the limit 
of this expression as n goes to infinity, we're going to get a magic value called the number e. Okay, so the limit of this expression is the magic number e, which is about 2.7183. Okay, all right, so let's, let's do that. So e is about 2.7183, which is greater than 1 as n goes to infinity. Okay, so the limit now of this ratio is this number e, 2.7183, which is strictly greater than 1. So what does that mean? Well, the ratio test says that if the limit of the ratio is gr strictly greater than 1, then the original series must diverge. Okay, so let's make that conclusion and we can finish up. Okay. The series in two diverges. All right, so let me box that up. Okay. All right, so let's just recap what we did there in, in a procedural kind of way. And then I'll talk about why the test actually works. Okay. Now, firstly, with this ratio test, you um, it, it's it's when you have a series that has exponents and exp or exponentials in it, uh, sorry, exponents or factorials in it, you can try to apply this test. You look at the ratio of a sub n plus one over a sub n. You simplify your expression and you take the limit. If the limit of this ratio is strictly less than one, then the ratio test says the series converges. If the limit of the ratio is gr strictly greater than one, the ratio test tells you, tells you the series diverges. Now, what happens if the rate limit of the ratio is equal to one? Well, the ratio test tells you nothing then. Okay, you know nothing. You need to use some other test. So there are limits, um, no pun intended, um, of this, this ratio test. It can't do everything. Okay, now a good question here is what's the, why, why do I have to make a distinction between the limit being less than one and greater than one? So I'm gonna give you a very rough idea of why the, um, the ratio test works, okay? So let me just share my screen with you again. All right, I'll take a new piece of paper here. All right, okay, so just, just very basically, and this isn't a formal proof at all. All right, so I'm going to say I'm going to say let the limit of this ratio go to L, say, as some number L, as n goes to infinity. All right. Now, what this means is that for large n, a sub n plus one is approximately equal to a sub n. So for for large values of n, a sub n plus one is a approximately equal to this, just by sort of making that an equal sign and moving that up to the other side. So are we approximately equal. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the the limit of the partial sums of a, of a series involving a sub n. All right, so consider, please, the following partial sum, s sub n. So that's just the sum of the first, say, uh, big n terms. Okay. Now, now the, the subscripts here, the labeling of the subscripts here aren't important. Okay, I've just started at one, but you could start, you could say, okay, well, 
you could start this at k or something which is you know um where n is bigger than k okay i've just i've just kept it one two three just to keep things as simple as i can okay so then using this expression here i can put a absolutely uh, approximately equal sign to and a2 for n equals say one a sub two is l a1 a sub three putting that in there would be approximately equal to l times a sub two okay and you can continue this okay and then you can go back and say all right what's a sub one again oh that, well, that's fine but a sub two forgetting about the l is just l times a sub approximately equal to l times a sub one so this will become l squared a sub one okay and you can continue that and you get something like this now notice you've got a common factor of a sub one now and what have you got left behind you've you've got a geometric sum Okay, you're following so far? We've got this sequence of partial sums. We've used the limiting condition to get that approximate, approximately equal to a sub n plus 1, approximately equal to L sub a sub 1, uh, a sub n for n large. And then we've just done a little bit of algebra using that. Okay. All right, so this is a geometric sum. Okay, now when you take the limit of this partial sum as n goes to infinity, this then becomes um, your, inf your infinite sum, which is a geometric sum. Okay, and we know that a geometric sum. converges if L is strictly less than 1 and it diverges if say L is greater than 1 okay sorry let me just pu push that there okay so this is just a rough argument remember I've got approximately equal to signs here this is just a rough argument to show where the L less than one and where the L or the limit of the ratio is less than one and convergence comes from and similarly divergence when L is greater than one. So what do you think? Pretty cool. It's not a formal proof, but it's pretty close to a formal proof. It's just sort of some the basics and you could you can use these these arguments to, to formally um, go through and prove it but but that's where you, where you how you can justify oh if the limit of the ratio is less than one you have convergence and if the limit of the ratio is greater than one you have divergence now if the limit of the ratio equals one the ratio test cannot be used it doesn't tell you anything okay anyway hope you enjoyed that presentation hope you found it useful in other videos i'll be talking more about series and more mathematics and all sorts of things and um hope you can join me for those presentations. If you have any comments, any questions, put them in the comment section. Thanks a lot, everyone. Bye.